let's look at introducing the idea of an integral, which is the same exact thing as an antiderivative. So I'm going to use those words interchangeably. An integral is an antiderivative. So, so far, we've been working in one direction in calculus. So we've been going from an original function to its derivative. So we've been taking derivatives all semester, and that has gotten us from f to f prime. But this direction, we're going the other way. We're taking an antiderivative or an integral. So again, integrals, also called antiderivatives. And they're going to use this symbol. So that long S looking thing means take the antiderivative or take the integral. And it's going to work the other way. It's like we're starting with F prime and we want to get back to f of x. We would take the antiderivative. And then same thing, we could get to a function called capital F of x, which is typically what we use to describe the antiderivative. F prime is the derivative. Capital F of x would be the antiderivative of our original function, lowercase f of x. And then to get back to the original function, from capital F to lowercase f would be the derivative again. So we have this big picture with three different functions. The derivative of capital F is lowercase f. The derivative of regular lowercase f is f prime. And then now we're going to work the other way. We're going to go from f prime to regular f, and then all the way up to capital F if we took the antiderivative twice. So just looking at this relationship. So with this definition, we have a function, and normally the antiderivative, again, is called capital F of x, is the antiderivative of this lowercase f of x, our typical original function. This is true as long as we take the derivative of capital F of x and we get back to lowercase f of x. Capital F is definitely the antiderivative if we take the derivative of it and we get back to the original function. The process for finding antiderivatives is called antidifferentiation or integration, and this is denoted by the integral symbol. So we would take the integral or take the antiderivative of lowercase f of x, and this dx means with respect to x, we would get capital F of X plus C. So that again, that long S looking thing means take the antiderivative of regular lowercase f of X and you'll get capital F of X plus C and I'll explain that plus C in just a moment. So this sounds kind of complicated, but if we know how to take a derivative, we should be able to take an antiderivative. So let's first look at a couple pairs. We have lowercase f of x is 13, and capital F of x is 13x. And we want to determine, is capital F really the antiderivative of lowercase f of x? So is the antiderivative of 13, 13x? Well, let's see by checking its derivative. What's the derivative of capital F, 13x? The derivative of 13x is 13 which gets us back to lowercase f. We've satisfied this condition here that says capital F is the antiderivative as long as we can take the derivative of it and get back to lowercase f. So yes, 13x is the antiderivative of 13. And with our new notation, how we would write that is if we want to take the antiderivative of 13 with respect to x, all we're doing is we're thinking, well, what had a derivative of 13 must have been a 13x. Basically, we're given the derivative and we're asked what the original function was. If the derivative is 13, the original function must have been a 13x, plus there could have been a constant at the end. The original function could have been 13x plus 1, and the derivative would still be just 13. It could have been 13x minus 100. The derivative would still just be 13. So we'd say 13x plus any constant would have a derivative of 13. So let's do that again. We want to see, is the antiderivative of 2x x squared? 
determine if capital F is really the antiderivative of lowercase f. So is the antiderivative of 2x really x squared? Well, let's check, just like we did above. Well, what's the derivative of capital F of x? The derivative of x squared is 2x, which really gets us that lowercase f of x. So same as what we just checked above. Check by taking the derivative of the antiderivative. It should get you back to the original function. So in our new symbols, we would say taking the antiderivative of 2x, dx just means with respect to x, we are given the derivative of something. The derivative of something is 2x, and we're asked to find the original function. So if the derivative is 2x, what was the original function? What has the derivative of 2x must have been x squared plus any constant. Could have been x squared minus 3, and the derivative would still be 2x, and it could have been x squared plus 200, and the derivative would have still been 2x. So you're given the derivative, and you're asked what the original function was. So in this notation, we're given f of x, and we're working the other way. We're saying what was the original function. We want to take the antiderivative and get back to capital F of x, and we can check that by taking the derivative of it, and we should get back to the original function. So our answer here, x squared plus c, we can take the derivative of it to check again. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of any constant c is just going to be 0. So we do get back to exactly what was in the integrand, so we know we did it correctly. So now look at the next one and see if you can think about what had a derivative of 3x squared and it will pick up in the next video.